Hey, good morning, Elgin. Uh, Pastor Curtis here with Jason and Carrie, and we just wanted to spend some time with you today on the Crossroads Coronicles. A little wordplay there. Uh, today, we just want to talk about worship a little bit. I uh, got a scripture for you. It comes out of 1 Chronicles 16, verses 23 through 24. Uh, in my quiet time with God this morning, I uh, had the opportunity to read this, and it just spoke volumes to me. Uh, the book of Chronicles is written by the prophet Ezra, and he wrote this 450 years before the birth of Christ, but he is praising uh, our Savior, Jesus Christ, even 450 years before it's born. So here's what it says. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wondrous works among all people. You know, we just want to encourage you guys today as you go throughout your day, as we deal uh, with this, uh, just the difference that's going on in our day-to-day -day life, uh, the worry maybe, the anxiety that we have, that uh, if you'll praise Jesus, uh, I promise you it will help you with the things that we're going through. So Jason's going to talk a little bit today about, uh, about just worshiping Jesus. Uh, I just have a couple of things. The first question I think we should ask is where does worship originate true worship because everybody worships something even non-believers have something that they worship if i were to ask you what's the most important thing that you put above everything in your life and you had to answer right now more than likely that's that could be very well what you worship um <clears throat> so where does true worship come from uh so obviously that comes from god but let's look at that a little deeper. If you have, so you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they are all equal. They are all co-equal and co-eternal. They are perfect in love and joy and unity. So God has worship within his own essence. So they are continuously, um, all the time, in a constant state of worship to one another. Okay, so that's where worship originates. So also let's look at another part of the Bible where it talks about where we were made in the image and the likeness of God. So if you put those two together, we were made to be uh, in part worshipers. So we were made to be a part of what they're doing. Um, and so my question, it goes back to what's the most important thing in your life? Uh, that's probably what you're worshiping. And uh, my encouragement, my challenge, our, our challenge today is, is to challenge you to, uh, to make God be the answer to that question. Who's the number one thing? What do you put above everything else? God. Why? Because that's why we were created. Yeah, those are great words, Jason. And uh, as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, we were made to worship God. Now, Carrie, what do you have today? So, first of all, I made some notes so I wouldn't forget what I wanted to say to you guys. But um, I think that we all need to make sure that we understand what worship is. And the definition for worship, if you Google it or look on uh, dictionary.com, is an expression of reverence or adoration towards a deity. Um, the only real true act of worship is um, reverence towards our God, the one true God. So, that is what worship is, but where do we apply that in the other areas of our life? And so parents, if you're talking to your kids about what worship is, it's not just um, singing praise songs in church. There are a lot of other ways that you can worship God. Um, in Exodus, God reminds us that there's only one true God to worship. And then in John, um, he reminds us that we must be led by the Spirit to worship God. So we need to look at the different ways that we're applying our worship. Um, one of my favorite verses when we're talking about worship is in Hebrews. It's Hebrews 12, 28 and 29. And it says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. And that right there is why we worship. We worship because God sacrificed his son for us. And that was a huge thing. And so when we think about the time that we give to God, whether it be listening to praise songs on K-Love or Air One or the different ways that you find that music, we need to remember that that's why we're worshiping. If it's while we're reading our Bible, if it's just while we're spending some time 
out in God's creation. We remember he made all of this for us. He gave all, us all of this. And so we need to worship him. We should be thankful and we should be grateful that we are allowed to worship a God that is so perfect and that is so holy. And then we need to remember that all of this crazy world, everything that's going on right now, he's bigger than all of that. And he can take away everything in an instant. We're kind of seeing that right now. Um, everything can change in an instant. And sometimes God uses these times to bring us back to him. So while you're spending a lot of time at home alone or, um, in front of your TV, maybe, maybe stop the Netflix and, and open your Bible and remember why we're here. And maybe God's given us this extra time alone and with our families to get back to where we need to be. Okay. That's a good word. You know, a lot of times uh, we think worship as what we do on Sunday mornings. And, you know, when, when I hear the word worship, a lot of times I think about our praise team here at Crossroads Baptist Church and how we're blessed with such a great uh, praise team. But, uh, you know, our job as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ is to worship him at all times. So I would just encourage you uh, throughout uh, the rest of the day, throughout uh, the rest of the week, month, uh, from now on, is to just find ways to, to be on purpose when it comes to the worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So today, I would just encourage you to choose to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a good day.